Good day, welcome to another edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. I'm Eric Gross, your host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Fran Wills, with Jill Figuerella and Pat Bellino. This is the 2017-18 budget story. In addition, we're going to be visiting the Putnam Valley Elementary School, the great Putnam Valley Revolutionary War reenactment took place the other day, fantastic. As well as stopping off at the high school, checking out a peer mediation program, brand new here in Putnam Valley. Welcome. Thank you. The 27-18 budget is exciting. Vote takes place on May 16th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. The budget totals $48.5 million. Tax levy increase, though, 0.84%. Well, about $300,000. How'd you guys do it? Well, we have some um, really wonderful um, cooperation, collaboration in our office to make this happen, and with the board. Um, our administrators, with um, the leadership of our treasurer, um, Jill Figuerella, um, we work on um, the idea that from the time that I came here, the goal was to expand educational opportunities. How do we do that? We've, we've incorporated a number of new programs for students that have been very successful. For example, our science research program is one of them. We brought back a, language, a second language to the high school. We are um, increasing our opportunities in science, so for example, in our budget, we have an additional science teacher, um, and we have looked at ways to um, inc incorporate um, new uh, approaches to literacy um, and just to give students a better, better leverage in their future as they become citizens with careers, with college. We want them to succeed. And now we have to be understanding that there is a great deal of competition um, in the world uh, that they are going to face. One of the most exciting portions of the budget deals with an international baccalaureate program that's being introduced at the high school for 11th and 12th grade students. Give students two years of college. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, the IB program is an international program. It's been known for many years. Um, and um, a number of schools in the region have looked at this as a, another way to enhance the potential for their students, the potential for their careers, for their success. And uh, Ms. Intrieri has been very active working with our uh, staff, our faculty, um, to apply for the IB um, the ability to offer IB. It's a very lengthy and complex application process. She has engaged with the faculty. They have submitted an application. This would not take effect for another two years, however, because it is um, the process of obtaining approval to move forward and to get the training, the necessary training, uh, to put this uh, program officially um, to have this program work. Good. Think about the cost savings to families. Two years of college when you're still in high school, credits like that, that's thousands of dollars. Yes, and many colleges um, are very eager to recruit students that have the IB because the IB is not uh, based on the kind of standardized test that we're used to. It's based on problem solving, it's writing, uh, project-based students um, do research, and their work is actually peer-reviewed mm. by professors and others in other parts of the world looking at the work they're doing. They also have the global connection. They actually can um, communicate with other students in the IB program. Now, there's a changeover in faculty and staff this year. Yes. A number of people are retiring. Mm -hmm. The number is 16. Yes. Is that inordinately large? It is a, a large number for us, and about half of those are our uh, support staff, and about half are teaching staff, faculty. So it's an opportunity, again, to uh, look at some, some savings mm -hmm. and to look at some new 
um, journeys with um, our educational program because we can bring in people with different background, some different expertise um, to continue the process that we have here in this district of improvement. One of the programs I noticed in the budget is a director of learning and innovative educational opportunities. Yes. This, years ago, and for many years, this district had a, a director of curriculum. And uh, for the past several years, that position um, has not existed here. And at this point in um, our path as a school district, and with the more, uh, with more demands, more requirements from not just the state education department, but as I was saying before, from the uh, the kinds of expertise, the kinds of skills that we want our students to have, we need to have someone who is focusing on the learning or the curriculum piece. And the, this position brings together also the instructional technology because educational uh, innovation is about how we use technology for instruction, not simply as a, something we um, add in or substitute for something else to make something more efficient, but in fact, as a tool to further instruction. One of the ways, for example, this year, we have in our budget to um, introduce uh, Chinese as a language, mm -hmm. Mandarin Chinese, at the middle school, which would carry the students on through high school and be their language, their second language. Now, we could not do this on our own. To obtain a teacher of Chinese is very, very difficult and they are not easily accessible to us. But there is a wonderful program at the Orange Ulster Boses, which is a distance learning program. Mm. Now, it's not distance learning where you get online. You actually communicate with a teacher who is teaching not only our students, but has students in other schools at, you know, as well. They will be teaching just our students for that class. But they are experienced at this and our students have an opportunity to do something we couldn't mm. provide for them. That's another one of those examples, but that is a, t a form of using technology as it can be used to really promote educational advancement. Well, besides Fran, the gal who has been living and breathing the budget for the last umpteen months mm -hmm. is Jill Figuerella. And nice. Jill, the proposed savings in the budget new cost budget impacts. Tell us about that. Right. So we do have, um, as mentioned, we have some retirements coming that enables us to um, have a less, um, you know, expenditure as far as salaries go with new hires. And um, we also have um, our New York State uh, contribution for retirement uh, purposes for pension plans. Um, that rate has come down uh, this year for both the teaching staff and the non-teaching. So those are, are two areas uh, that had significant um, impact on the savings. Um, there are some impacts on costs, though, that uh, we are experiencing, and particularly in the area of health insurance premiums. Uh, we're seeing a, um, an 8% increase there, and um, that is having a significant impact on the budget in the opposite direction. So, um, you know, those are things that also have to be taken into consideration when, um, you know, coming up with new initiatives and, and making it all balance and work out. Um, you know, so those, those, that increase by itself, the health insurance is about a $400,000 mm. increase. And, and then the districts in the area will all be experiencing similar situations. Um, but the tax levy, um, we, you talked about that early on, mm -hmm. uh, are, is a lower, um, increase than we could have gone to uh, with the formula. Uh, the formula would have been a 0.96 increase for us after working through those figures. Uh, but we're able to do all these things with with the 0.84 increase. And, and that's, you know, something that uh, we want to say, you know, we're not, we're not going to the max, you know, so. And Putnam Valley, for the last couple of years, had that tax levy lower than the previous year. Correct. Five years in a row, um, we have been able to present a um, tax levy that's lower than it was five years ago, and a budget also lower than it was five years ago. So kind of unique in New York State. It is. It is. I took a. I, I looked. Took a look at other districts. I, I. To be fair, and there's about a dozen districts statewide, including our own, um, who've been able to lower the levy. 
um, over the last two cons you know consecutive years. But that's out of 680 districts, it, it, it is it is quite um, a, a feat. What about buses? A couple of vehicles being proposed as well. Right, and um, the um, those two vehicles are are just for uh, actually. Uh, replacing aging vehicles but they're also to reduce the size and the expenditure of the, the larger vans that we use now um, we're getting to more practical vehicles for our terrain for our purposes of uh, like single student transportation mm -hmm. to faraway places and and such so that will be a savings overall actually from what we use now for those vehicles right. well there's an energy performance contract proposal as well Something that's not going to cost the district a penny. Pat, we talked about that during our last show. Just reiterate that for our viewers. Yeah, we, what we've done is, uh, you know, working with the board, uh, working with a few board members, uh, and looking at, at our district here, we decided that uh, it was important for us to continue with any kind of savings that we could do, uh, and that included the energy performance side. Uh, we brought in Con Ed Solutions as the, we, as the winner of a bid to come in. They brought in engineers. They brought in... A uh, number of people to scour our buildings to see where we, where we could find energy savings and, and my other piece of it was to look at how do we upgrade our infrastructure uh, and again my goal was to do that at no cost to the taxpayer uh, the final outcome was we put together a package that'll uh, save the district approximately 300, $380,000, $384,000 a year uh, to do that and then have a number of upgrades uh, which I'll just go over with you really quick uh, Every, build, every building, every light will be changed over to LED. Lighting, uh, LED lighting is more, more efficient, cost efficient wise, energy efficient wise. Uh, geothermal retrofit, uh, as you're aware, this campus, uh, middle school and high school, back in the 90s, when I was on the board, we approved uh, having the geothermal system put in. This, this campus uses no oil. Uh, we're now looking at the elementary school, which does have a boiler, uh, which we're going to put in a, in a smaller unit, a smaller geothermal setup to, to help offset that. We believe that will offset the, the use of oil by about two-thirds mm. uh, over in that, in that area there. Uh, each of the buildings, uh, the middle school and the high school and the bus garage will have uh, solar panels placed on it to help reduce the, you know, capture the energy and again reduce our electrical bills. Uh, We'll have the, again, as I mentioned, the upgrades. Uh, windows and doors, especially at the elementary school, 1962 and the 1935 sections will all be upgraded. Made, you know, there, if you go over there now, there's areas over there, the 62 especially, and the 35 that are single pane windows. Uh, they, they, I think we've gotten our use out of them from 62 and 1935, <laughs> so now they'll be double, triple paned and, uh, and will help again seal in the building to make it, make it safer and better for everybody. Uh, we're also tying in with France Help. Uh, we're, we're tying in all of this here with a an educational component. So Con Edison Solutions is also going to be working with us with the uh, with Self and, mm -hmm. and Fran. I'm going to ask you to what is it the uh, Children's uh, Environmental, Environmental Literacy Foundation, Foundation. Uh, to put together a whole curriculum that can be for all the buildings to go as we as we move forward with this project to tie in the project with an educational component. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, with, with the new door replacements, and you know, there's all new doors that, that, that are needed. We have replaced some of them already, but again, with the with the expect the expected expenditure for these upgrades, uh, with the savings, the savings will generated will pay for all of this. And is it this three hundred eighty four thousand dollars a year for the next fifteen years? Yep. And there's another piece that the if the community uh, approves it, it's it's a it's a, a second piece on the on the budget line there. Uh, if they approve it, the state will give us, but again, basically for being transparent with what we're doing, will give us an additional 10% uh, for, that, for the 15 years. So that's another it, roughly about $60,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So if you do that over the 15 years, you're, you know, you're looking at a significant amount of money. So I think that's, that should be emphasized because, um, again, Pat's leadership um, in this area um, has helped to uh, provide a, an energy savings program that catapults the district mm -hmm. into another, uh, another level of savings and sustainability, environmental 
responsibility and stewardship of our whole facility. And I think it's important to note, again, that what we're asking the public to do is to endorse it, in a sense, with their vote. Um, the, st the state is basically saying, you know, Pat talked about it in terms of transparency, because we, we can do this project, it doesn't require uh, any type of uh, budget vote because it is not costing mm -hmm. more for the district. But the fact that you go to the public and you talk about it as we're doing now, and that the bub public has a chance to say, yes, we want to have these energy savings in our district. With that, there is this added incentive mm -hmm. for a additional funding that is considerable. And when you think about that, all of that funding can be seen as educational gain. So by endorsing the project, in a sense, it's an opportunity. Right. And so what we're saying is this is, what, this is why we have it as a separate referendum, because often people think of a separate referendum sure. as more, more money. That they, but it, in this case, it is not. Okay. It is simply to let the public know what we are planning to do. We're going to take a break, head over to the Putnam Valley Elementary School for a wonderful program, the second annual Putnam Valley Revolutionary War Reenactment. We'll be right back. What a difference a year makes. We're here with Margaret Podesta at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. And Margaret, a year ago today, it was a gorgeous sunny day. It was, yes. Today it's raining, but the children doesn't matter to them. The kids are so excited taking part in Putnam Valley Elementary School's second annual Revolutionary War Reenactment Day. Right. What an experience. It's wonderful. And I actually think these skies are going to clear up because we've been watching the weather very closely. But this is our second annual fourth grade Revolutionary War reenactment. And we're so excited. And the kids haven't even noticed it's raining because they're out here for the whole day bringing history to life. What are some of the activities that the children go through? They are going to be eating their homemade stew, very authentic living. They're going to be putting up tents. They're learning about printmaking. They're learning about medical care for the troops over there. And they're also participating with the fife and drum with one of our high school teachers. And the volunteers that come out on a day like today, we want to thank them as well. We really do. We want to thank the PTA who supports this completely. We especially want to thank the Putnam Valley Education Foundation who's funded this day, bringing history to life at Putnam Valley Elementary. We're so grateful. The teachers have gone above and beyond to get ready for today, our teacher aides. And of course, we have high school students here with Mr. Odell with the Fife and Drum Corps. So it's a great day. We're going to show you some of the activities taking place now. Margaret, we thank you. Thank you very much. And you stay tuned. Katie O'Dell is a teacher here at the elementary school, fourth grade teacher, and you're in charge of the uh, drum corps, I understand, today. Uh, well, I did or help to organize the reenactment. How? We started it last year. This is our second annual event. Why is this such a great success? Uh, well, I think it's just great for the kids to see history come to life. You know, as uh, Sergeant Major Ryan says, we get them out of that two by four approach. Two walls of the class, four walls of the classroom, two covers of a book, gets them out of that sort of traditional model, and it brings history to life for them. And the kids just, they, they love it. They love just the hands-on nature of it. And of course, I just couldn't do this without the support of my team and the PTA and the, um, the Putnam Valley Education Foundation. Um, it's a real sort of community event that a lot of people have helped to make possible. As we say, it started just a year ago, and it was so successful last year, it's been expanded this year and hopefully years to come. That is the goal, to make it an annual event. We thank you. You're welcome. Katie O'Dell. One of the more exciting exhibits today is our friend Tom Hunt, and Tom's the blacksmith man. And Tom, what are you doing with the kids today? Today we're going to have them make a belt buckle, a musket tool, and some essex for cooking with. How did you get involved in this uh, great endeavor that dates back, what, hundreds and hundreds of years? Well, I've always had an interest in metallurgy, and after a successful career of 40 years in metallurgy, I retired and became a colonial blacksmith. Ah, <laughs> so the children are actually going to be making belt buckles. Yes, they are going to be hammering out iron. I have the iron right here. I hold on to it, and they hammer it on the anvil into the shape that I tell them to make. Fantastic. It's a wonderful thing. American history comes to life here at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. 
you know, that is such an amazing program, that reenactment. It's just marvelous. Yes. The kids love it. it the they'll remember this for it. the rest of their lives. That's because right. it, 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 they what they remember are some of the startling things they learn <laughs> yes. about medicine and yes. surgery in those days. And uh, that is an eye-opener, and our staff is, you know, is very uh, eager to participate, uh, and the kids enjoy that very much. And it was so great having some of the high school people visit the uh, elementary school. And the faculty and the music. Yes, it was wonderful, the wonderful. Band. Another great program taking place at the high school is called Peer Mediation. Peer Mediation at the high school level at Putnam Valley. Yes. Why? Well, you know, for quite some time in high schools, we tend to see um, increasing you know, issues that students have with each other, conflicts, um, different types of, sometimes it's bullying mm -hmm. that you see, uh, different types of experiences that lead students to be either suspended in the school or outside the school or to have different types of penalties. And we are interested in looking at a more um, restorative justice type of approach. In other words, how can you help your fellow student to settle some of these conflicts? And how can you do it, intervene before or prevent something from happening so a student has to miss school to be suspended? And peer mediation gives certain students the tools. They volunteer to be part of a training. And we have actually a member of our community who is um, very, very skilled in this area. His name is Mark Weiss. Mm -hmm. And he trained our uh, students, our high school students, in how to be peer mediators. And now, when there is a conflict in the school, when there is a problem, the a peer mediator can be called in to sit down with a student who's having the issue or two students who are having a some type of a conflict mm -hmm. and help them work it through, help them problem solve. Find how to use words rather than other ways of, in, in a positive way, um, to solve problems. Frankly, the issue has become exacerbated in terms of conflict use due to social media. And so there's really an imperative now that we help students learn how to solve problems in a positive, in a positive way. And it's very good training for the students who become peer mediators as well as for the students who go through the process. And there is a peer mediation room at the high school. I'm going to stop by, say hi to Sandy and Trey, the principal of Putnam Valley High. You stay tuned. Well, as promised, Sandy and Trey, the principal here at Putnam Valley High, and we're in the peer mediation room. Lively room, posters, signs all over the place. Exciting. So we are very excited about our peer mediation program. We got this idea last year where we started to see a lot of student conflicts that could be resolved with students getting involved. And we want a community where students have more of a voice in their school and can participate in solving their own problems. So this year we worked with Mr. Weiss, who um, basically is from Operation Respect and has been trained in peer mediation, and we brought him in. And we got a number of faculty, Mr. DiGregorio, Mr. Campion, Mr. Odell, Mr. Morrell, a few others, to work with about 30 students trained in conflict resolution skills. And we had two trainings over at the firehouse. And then we did a couple of trial peer mediations this spring. And we had our pizza kickoff last week, which was exciting. And Mr. Weiss came back to do some refresher skills with us. And we have our room all ready. And we're all set and ready to roll. The peer mediation is very, very popular on the county level and town level in Putnam County. So starting at the school level, just imagine how this is going to improve things in the years to come. So what I like about it is we're also looking at training more peer mediators for next year. The more that we can get trained, the more students have the skills to solve their own conflicts and then help others to solve their conflicts as well. And that just creates a more positive community in our building. Okay, we're going to meet two of those peer mediators. You stay tuned. Mike Munson, Riley Nolan are with us. Mike is a junior, Riley a sophomore. How has peer mediation helped you act guys out already? Well, it's definitely helped me with my, my own conflicts uh, with my friends and my uh, family. and definitely helped me uh, resolve them. And what do, what do you learn in peer mediation, Riley? Um, we're learning how to 
take small conflicts and not like really blow them out of proportion and kind of keep it at uh, a controlled pace. So uh, you hear both sides of the conflict and try to come to a resolution without any actual fighting and really calm peaceful way. Not to get too personal, but conflicts like what? Bullying, watching the wrong TV show? Um, well, we, uh, we can't really go into too much detail. Okay. Uh, confidentiality is a big part of the peer mediation program. But yeah, just, you know, silly, uh, small problems between friends, you know, disputes like that over online or anything like that. And how often do you guys meet? Uh, well, whenever there's a problem. Uh, okay. There are a number of peer mediators uh, that can be pulled out of class at any time, and um, we're always on call to So you meet right problem. here in the peer mediation room, mm -hmm. yes. and usually the problems are resolved in a matter of minutes? Uh, well, it depends how large the problem are. Sometimes it can go from 10 minutes, and sometimes it's like 40 minutes. But, but you say you're always on call. That's fascinating. So yeah. during the course of the school day, Problem arises, administration contacts you folks? Mm hmm. Yep. I will, uh, I'll be in class and the assistant principal will come up and tell me, you know, seventh period, you have a, uh, a peer mediation, you're going to have to mediate two students. And how does it make you feel? Oh, uh, at first, you know, I'm a bit nervous, but um, I, I've already done around two mediations and now right. I'm, I'm comfortable and um, I, I feel good. I what feel about good. You, Raleigh? Uh, I myself, I haven't been called down for a mediation yet, but I have done a, a lot of practice with, uh, with Mark and uh, the whole group, and I feel like I learned a lot from it. And what's so great about this, as Sandy said a few moments ago, this is a junior and a sophomore, so they'll be with us for the next year and two years training other young people. So peer mediation is really in in the Putnam Valley schools. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, it's just going to keep going. Um, you know, the, the younger students, the freshmen coming in, they'll soon be trained, and it's just an ongoing program. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank Peer you. mediation in Putnam Valley. So, Jill, once again, the vote is the 16th. Yes, some important dates, last-minute information. That's right. Uh, the vote is going to have, uh, there'll be two propositions on the vote this year, the, the budget, and as mentioned, the energy performance contract. Um, the vote is uh, the usual voting hours between um, 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. Um, and there's a newsletter going out this week. Everyone will be able to uh, read about everything that we spoke about. Um, and it's very important for people to get out and vote. Um, there is the deadline of May 11th to be Putnam County registered for voting. And um, there's a deadline that evening of May 16th for the absentee ballots to be received by 5 p.m. So I encourage everyone to um, make sure that they're a part of the, um, the district budget. Friend, how do you want to wrap it up? Well, I just want to um, let the community know that we are always so appreciative and grateful for uh, the support of the community in all of our endeavors. Um, the budget is our opportunity to uh, demonstrate what we are trying to accomplish in the district and to present um, the information that the public needs in order to make a decision when they go to the voting poll, voting booths. We just hope that people go out and vote. It's your constitutional right. Get out and vote. The vote once again takes place May 16th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Putnam Valley Elementary School. We'd like to thank Pat Bellino, Jill Figuerella, the Superintendent of Schools, Fran Wills. I'm Eric Gross. Thanks so much for joining us for this edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Until next time, bye-bye.